When choosing an amplifier and speakers, it's critically important that you understand three simple rules to avoid damaging your equipment. The first rule is to know the power handling capacity of your speakers. The peak power capacity describes the maximum wattage that a speaker's voice coil can handle in a very short burst. This is often much more impressive and a much bigger number than the continuous power capacity, which describes the power level a speaker can handle over an extended period of time. Because the peak power capacity is much more impressive, it is often the one that's boasted on the speaker's box and marketing material. Just be sure to know the difference before making any calculations. All of the calculations in this video will be based on the speaker's continuous power handling capacity. Keep in mind that the power capacity of a speaker alone doesn't tell the full story about how loud that speaker can get. A speaker's maximum SPL output is determined by both its power handling capacity and its sensitivity, which describes how much SPL, or sound pressure level, can be expected at a given power input from the amplifier. This is often shown as the output level with one watt input level measured one meter away. If you know how loud a speaker is at one watt from the amplifier, and you know how many watts that speaker can safely handle, then you can determine how loud the speaker can potentially get. The next video will help you with running that calculation. There's a link to that video in the description below. Another thing to consider is the impedance of the speaker or speaker circuit, which is measured in ohms. Amplifier power varies depending on the impedance of the speakers you connect to it. In theory, having the impedance doubles the power output, and doubling the impedance halves the power output. This would mean that if you had an amplifier rated to provide 100 watts of power to an 8 ohm speaker, it would provide 200 watts to a 4 ohm speaker, and 400 watts to a 2 ohm speaker. But this is all theoretical. In practice, you'll rarely achieve these theoretical figures due to the design limitations of the amplifier. Within the amplifier specifications, you'll see that it's able to provide more power at half the impedance, but rarely a full doubling of power. Ohm's law tells us that more current is required at a lower impedance in order to provide the same level of voltage. It may be helpful to visualize this with a water pipe analogy. Think of the voltage as the water pressure, current as the amount of water flowing through the pipe, and resistance as the diameter of the pipe. If the diameter of the pipe is increased, water can flow more easily. Similar to current flowing when impedance of the speaker circuit is decreased. But this also means that more water, or more current, is required to maintain the same water pressure, or the same voltage. Eventually, the source may be incapable of supplying enough water, or current, if the resistance or impedance goes below a certain level. So, the second rule is to ensure that the amplifier is rated to provide the desired power output at the specified impedance. The specs of your amplifier probably show a range of impedances, usually between 4 and 16 ohms, and the power output that can be facilitated at each impedance. This rule is simple. Don't ask the amp to go beyond its specified power rating. Just because an amp can provide 100 watts at 8 ohms doesn't mean it will be able to provide 200 watts at 4 ohms, even though the theory might suggest that it can. It's possible that the amplifier won't be able to manage the extra current and heat that comes along with providing so much power through such a low impedance speaker circuit. The third rule is somewhat of a balancing act between the power handling capacity of your speakers and the power output rating of your amplifier. An amplifier that's too powerful or not powerful enough can cause damage to speakers or even the amplifier itself. This may be counterintuitive, but you're probably more likely to cause damage with an underpowered amplifier than you are with an overpowered amplifier. Notice that I said you are more likely to cause damage. Yes, the damage will ultimately be a result of improper gain staging in either case. No matter which amplifier and speaker combination you use, it's up to you as the person operating the system to ensure that the amplifier and speaker are operating within their specifications and that limiters are in place that will prevent excessive signal level from reaching the amplifier or the speakers. With that said, I'll share with you a general guideline for choosing an amplifier for maximum fidelity and performance. Choose an amp that's capable of providing between two and four times the continuous power rating of your speakers. For example, if my eight ohm speaker has a continuous power rating of 100 watts, I'll choose an amplifier that's rated to provide at least 200 watts at 8 ohms. You may hear this and think, won't that cause damage to my speakers? If you follow this guideline, 
and you allow the amplifier to operate at its max power output, then yes, your speakers will not be capable of handling that power from the amplifier. The voice coil of your speakers will become excessively hot and your speakers will be destroyed. The trick is to not turn the amplifier to 100%. Instead, run the amplifier at a level that doesn't exceed the speaker's continuous power capacity over an extended period of time. Now you might be asking yourself, what's the benefit of that extra power? Why not just use an amplifier with a power rating that's equal to the continuous power capacity of the speaker? The benefit of this additional power is to increase the headroom of the system. You certainly can use an amp that's only going to provide the speaker's continuous power capacity, but what often happens in this scenario is that you'll feel like the speakers are capable of producing more sound than you're hearing, so you'll increase the level of the signal going into the amplifier. At a certain point, the signal at the amplifier's input is driven into clipping, which results in a square wave signal that can cause damage to your speaker. It's much better to build in plenty of headroom so that you don't have the tendency to turn the signal up beyond your system's limits. With the extra headroom, the speakers will be able to perform to their full potential without the risk of clipping the signal at the amplifier's input. The additional headroom will also allow the system to produce the transient peaks and dynamics in the signal much more easily and much more cleanly. Remember, a doubling of power only equates to about a 3 dB increase. So for a full 6 dB of headroom, you'll want to double the power again, using an amplifier that's capable of providing four times the continuous power capacity of your speaker. The next video that's on your screen now will help you understand how loud your speakers need to be and will help you determine how much power you actually need. I'll see you over there.